am. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> Thank you guys for being here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I know I just watched the video that um, Call of Racing shared on their social channels. I think it was shared on yours as well. And um, it looked like a pretty emotional day. Did you have, um, just take us through that moment. And it appeared that you didn't have um, kind of an idea that that announcement was coming at that time. No, I didn't. So, um, you know, I, we were working on that, this deal for a while. And, um, you know, Brett and Chris been working on it for a while too. And they told me we need to come down to the shop and, and um, meet everybody from Nutrient Ag Solutions on a Zoom call and uh, meet Brent, Brent, and um, we went down there, and I had no idea that was going to happen. I actually went and talked to Chris, my dad and I did, for about 30 minutes before the Zoom call, and uh, Chris had me going pretty good. Um, you know, he, he wasn't the most positive about uh, what was about to happen in that meeting, and, uh, you know, Chris is a really positive guy, so when he was down, I was like, man, this, is, this isn't very good, so... Um, we went in the meeting and, um, you know, I talked a little bit and, and Brent was talking and, and then, um, you know, in the video is, is, is how it happened. Chris started talking, he was getting emotional and then he offered me 33 races and I didn't think it was, it was real at first because you can see in the video, I'm kind of just looking at Chris and then I'm looking at Brett sitting beside Chris to get his reaction he's kind of nodding his head yes and then you can hear dad in the video say are y'all really going to do this and then when he said yes it was just like wow this is unbelievable um it's something that we've we've been working on for a long time to have an opportunity like this um and to be partnered with a great organization like Colleg Racing and a great brand with Nutrient Ag Solutions it, it's just a dream come true and and to be able to be in the car every week um, is, is going to be great for me as well. So I'm just really blessed and, and humbled for this opportunity. And it's something we've been working on since I was 12 years old and, and started racing go-karts. So to have all this happen is, is a dream come true. Well, congratulations again. We're going to go straight to questions from the media. And we're going to take our first question from Bob Pockris. Go ahead, Bob. Yeah, Jeb, it's, I want to say it's been since 2015 since you've had more than 20 races in a, in a season. So just what what do you think it means for you and your career to be able to go out and actually run over 30 races and be, you know, uh, I would think, it, you know, know that you have a shot at the playoffs and, and a championship? Yes, sir. Yeah, Bob, that uh, that is something that is has been really tough for me the last couple of years is just not racing but once in a while and, and to, to get in that rhythm and to build that chemistry with a crew chief. Um, so I think that's been a uh, part of my struggle the last couple of years is, is just not having that consistency and every race is a life or death uh, moment for me, it feels like. So, so now I can really focus on my race craft and, and, and work with my team and, and they can kind of build um, notes um, to help me and know what I like as well. And I'm a, I'm gonna become a better uh, race car driver and not make as many mistakes, just cleaning up my race craft. And, um, and to be able to run for a championship is, is a dream come true. I feel like we'll, we'll definitely have a shot at that. And, and that's our goal kind of going into this season is, is to be able to run for that championship and to make that final four. Um, I feel like I know I can do it and I know Kyle Grayson can do it as well. So that's our goal is going into the season and I'm just excited to get to work. I mean, has there been points in the last four or five years where you thought I'm, I'm never going to get a full-time opportunity again? It, Bob, you can ask my sister and my family. It was, it was so many times that, you know, I was, I didn't know what I was going to do. Um, kind of getting emotional thinking about it. It's just been a, it's been a whirlwind. Thank you. Okay, we're going to take our next question from Woody Kane. Go ahead, Woody. Hey, Jim, appreciate your time. Congratulations, man. Um, talked with you in the past about the struggle to get to this point and how when you have a limited schedule, when you're especially when you're in really good equipment, the pressure to perform is, is even greater because you feel like, man, I got to use this as a springboard. Can you just describe what the environment is out there right now? Because you're not the only guy who's in this, has been in this type of situation for guys trying to climb up the ladder. What's the environment? like out there right now 
It's tough. It's, it's so uh, sponsorship driven and, and it's, 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 it's really tough to, to, to have an opportunity like I have. And, you know, a couple of years ago, uh, you know, I made a plan to, to go to, to JRM and, and to be in a, a, a good car and to be able to show what I can do. And the last couple of years, I feel like we've done that. We've done everything but win a race. We've, we've ran up front almost every week that we run. Um, and that was something that to help me get my confidence back as well. So had a good last couple of years uh, that went well. And, and, you know, my partners helped me get their state water heaters, LS, uh, Alsco, those companies really helped me get this opportunity that I have now with college racing and nutrient ag solution. So it was a lot of pressure uh, the last two years to go to perform when you, when you're not racing every week for sure. Um, and, and that was something really, but it was hard to deal with. I had seven races in 2019, and then this year I had 11 races. So uh, we built and built and built and, and had more opportunities. And um, that, that Richmond race, uh, I think, was one that, that really uh, helped, helped me get this opportunity. Um, we went ran second that day. So it's been a whirlwind, Woody. Uh, just just uh, really humbled for this opportunity and, and just, just ready to get to work and uh, try to go win races. Appreciate it. Thanks for your time. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, we're going to take our next question from Chris Estrada. Go ahead, Chris. Good morning, Jeff. First off, congratulations on the, the new ride. Um, I just want to talk to you about how important is it to join a team with a lot of upper grown men? Obviously, colleague had a great 2020 season last year, championship four appearance. I believe the driver you were replacing in the tank car had the most top tens all season. How important is it? being part of a team that has a, that is rising as opposed to a team where say performance has been static or a team that's just an outright rebuild mode? Um, it's really important. I feel like college racing over the last couple of years is getting better and better and better. And I feel like I'm going into an organization that is getting even, they're going to get even better this off season, the things that they're doing. Um, Matt Colleg and, and Chris Rice have done a, a great job building that race team. And uh, they're really passionate about winning. And um, you can see that th this last year, uh, they've won a lot of races and, and made that final four. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm really excited to be there. Uh, I couldn't be more happy to be at College Racing with Nutrient Ag Solutions. I think it's going to be a, a great partnership. And, and like you said, I, I feel like they're doing everything they can off the racetrack to make their cars better. They got a bunch of good people there. It's just a dream come true to, to be able to drive for, for that organization. Thank you, Jack. Thank you. Okay, we're going to take our next question from Jacob Seelman. Go ahead, Jacob. Thanks, Amanda. Uh, Jeb, congratulations. Obviously, as you've noted, uh, you've been you know part time or very limited the last couple of years. How, as a racer, how does the mindset for you now shift? going back to a full season opportunity instead of, you know, a race or two races here and then being off and then coming back for, for races here and there, you know, how, how do you adjust now back to putting a whole season together rather than just focusing on individual races? You know, that's a good question. I feel like, you know, winning is definitely still at the top priority. Uh, every time you get in the race car, you want to win, but I think just trying to clean up the race craft that I mentioned earlier and just uh, getting uh, stage points, trying to win stages, and really focusing more on the stages uh, and, and collecting those points versus, you know, the situation I was in this year. Sometimes we wasn't really worried about the stages. We would do some different pit strategies um, to just try to be there at the end of the race. So I think just looking at those stage points and uh, trying not to make any mistakes and finishing all the races, I feel like I've done a pretty good job of that uh, the last couple of years. I think that's the main thing It's just – trying to minimize the mistakes and uh, get a, as many stage points as you can and, and be there at the end and, and try to win, win races. Because I think, as you've seen with this playoff format, that winning is going to get you into the next round and, and, and keep you there. So I think winning is, is the key. Do you see yourself, you know, given what Ross did in that car this year as, as a playoff contender? A hundred percent. I think I've shown that the last two years. Um, racing I feel like that for me to have a home like I have at college racing and to be able to have that confidence and they have that confidence in me already behind the wheel and and not not having to worry about next week 
like I have been, it's just going to make me a better race car driver. And I feel like we can go run for the championship in 2021. And I'm just so excited and ready to get to Daytona. Thank you, Jeff. Good luck. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. We'll take our next question from Claire B. Lang. Go ahead, Claire. Thank you. You know, Jeb, I've been telling you for a long time, you needed to run full-time in the series. I think that's been years I've been saying that to you. But, you know, I, I've always told you you're scrappy, you're a competitor. In trucks, man, you were really good when you started in trucks. Why do you think you'll be good for the sport? Not just for college racing, but you seem to fit right into the kind of competitor we need right now. Well, Claire, um, yeah, I know the last couple of years you've, you've been telling me that and you've been a big supporter of mine and I, I really appreciate that. And um, today is definitely a dream come true. But, you know, I think um, I, this opportunity for, for me, you know, when I started racing trucks, I was in a really good equipment um, that first year I, I lit it up. And ever since then, it's been a struggle to get back in those situations and be able to race full time in the same kind of situation I was then. So I feel like this is my opportunity and it kind of revamps my career and, and the people that they have at College Racing and, and the cars that they have, um, everything they're doing off the track. It, it's really exciting. I'm so humbled to be there and, and I feel like we're going to be able to compete for wins every week and um, be there in the championship. And I'm just so excited and, and just ready for the season to be here. Jim, how do you prepare for the opportunity of a lifetime that you've worked so hard for? You and your dad have just sweated trying to get to this place. You know, we've already, I've already been working on it. I, you know, I'm doing everything I can off the track um, with my physical shape, uh, mentally. I'm doing a lot of things too. And, and just preparing, I think, is, is the biggest thing. And I've already been to the shop a couple of different times, but now I can really go there a lot since the announcement's out and, and just get to work with my crew chief and my team and, and bonding with the engineers there and, and going over everything that we're going to do before every race and what we're going to do after every race with debriefing and, and just getting better for the next week. So if there's anything that, that I can be doing, I'm doing it from trying to maximize pit road stuff to, to maximizing restarts and uh, things of that nature. So I'm already thinking ahead, and uh, I will definitely be doing everything I can to, to try to get the Nutrinac Solutions 10 car in victory lane. I tell you what, it's going to be fun to cover you full time in the Xfinity Series, and congratulations on the announcement. Thank you so much, Claire. Okay, we're going to take our next question from Jonathan Kirkland. Go ahead, Jonathan. Hey, Jeb, it's Jonathan with the Gazette in South Boston. Um, first off, congratulations. You know, when I talked to you um, a while back, you would talked about the season and um, the race that you run and the, the positives, but you could tell that you were looking for something and you had mentioned it. And when I talked to your dad, he said that, you know, he really wanted this for you because um, you were the hardest working person that he knows. Um, so kind of talk about the um, starting off. You, you mentioned when you were younger and working all the way up, what it's like to finally, to finally get this opportunity. Yeah, Jonathan, it, it, uh, it's definitely not been easy. You know, I started racing go-karts and uh, went to late models and, and, and did that for several years. And then when I got into the upper ranks of NASCAR, I had success right away, um, and, and it came really easy to me. I was in a, a, a really good team, really good situation, and that just kind of disappeared. And, and ever since that 2013 se season, it's just been uh, really tough to, to – to find that chemistry in a team and to, to have the right equipment and to be there full time, um, it, it's been a struggle. And, and to, to have Nutrinac Solutions and Kyla Grayson believe in me to, to take over that car and, and, and try to go compete for wins um, is, is, is huge for, for my confidence, one. But to be in this situation at Kyla Grayson and have a sponsor like I do uh, with Nutrinac Solutions, it's, it's just a it's just a great marriage, and um, I'm so excited, and and I think we're gonna have a lot of success together on and off the racetrack. Uh, we, we're working on a lot of cool things together already, and just just ready for Daytona to be here. The last two years we've had some good runs, but for me, I feel like I'm gonna be even a a better driver in this 2021 season, just knowing that I have next week, and um, you know that's just gonna help me and and build the chemistry with the team. All right. Thanks, Jeb. Good luck. Thanks, buddy. All right. And Jeb, before we let you go, just a quick question here as we enter 
um, the off season. Um, is there a track that you're really looking forward to um, competing at next season? Right now, it's all of them. Uh, I'm just I'm just ready to to get there, uh, to be honest. But um, you know, I, I love the short tracks, Richmond, Martinsville's. Uh, they're kind of my bread and butter places that I've grew up grew up racing at. But uh, the speedways, we're looking forward to those. College racing runs really well there. But uh, there's some tracks that I haven't been to in a while. Um, you know, uh, California, I haven't been there since 2016. Phoenix hadn't been there since 2016. So. There's some racetracks that I haven't been to in a long time that I'll be doing a lot of homework to try to prepare because um, I'm sure a lot of these places we won't have practice as well. So um, that's kind of a curveball, but um, we're ready for the, the challenge and, and just uh, ready for the season. All right. Well, congratulations again. We appreciate you joining us today, and um, we, uh, we wish you the best of luck as we go into the next season. Thank you. I really appreciate y'all taking the time talking with me. Awesome. Well, just to the media who are here joining.